Good morning, Mons. You mean good afternoon? Shut up. I was gonna do like a gay, like community post thing, <laughs> but yes, yeah, I've been doing. <laughs> it's just that I am actually like, I get it's good. It's pretty stylish. <laughs> Um, yeah, it, it's, like, I got, like, that, that freaking ultimate now. Oh, oh, this is my first video on the setup, and it's just, it's kind of weird. I also just woke up, so, you yeah. know. Yeah, today we're going to be reacting to Film Theory, Rick is a Morty Confirmed. I, I, I haven't really watched anything from the film theories, but I wanted to, so... I was gonna react to his like a uh, good place one. <laughs> I still can do that, but it's it's just it's been a while now, so I feel like nobody's gonna really be interested in it anymore. But uh, I am a Rick and Morty fan. <laughs> if, you, if you didn't know, um, so yeah, I'm actually interested in these theories. Let's see. What is? It's just I. I still can't process this that <laughs> like it's it's really good. Um Thank you, Mom and Dad, for sponsoring this video. <laughs> Alright, uh, let's go. <laughs> I I watched this little short film thing. やっぱりじいちゃんか。奇跡だエイリアンがいただろ。シーズン<笑><笑><笑> Oh my god, that's actually got a is a pretty juicy intro of his. Can't wait to watch this anime. <laughs> oh my god. Is this gonna be his new, like, film theory intro? So over the top. I'm just saying the science inside. <laughs> Hello, Internet. Welcome to Phil. It's like that Na Naruto new season. The eternal question: Wubba Lubba Dub Dub or Wubba Lubba Sub Sub? Since we're talking about Rick and Morty, the anime. You see, the oh team God. behind Rick and Morty. Oh, I'm not even subscribed to him. Hold on, I'm sorry, but. I will subscribe. That's probably why I haven't been saying his film theory videos. They're just like I'm recommended every now and then. Of the year, in fact. Right. And normally this wouldn't be the sort of thing that I would dedicate. They've been doing a lot of anime to. stuff. A fun little spin-off episode to keep the fandom engaged. Japanese sure, stuff. Whatever. Get a few extra views for your Adult Swim YouTube channel. Get a bit more promotion to keep Rick and Morty on everyone's minds in the entertainment wasteland that is 2020. Yeah, I get it. You got to run on that content treadmill, Rick and Morty. Yeah. But here's why I'm dedicating a theory to these anime shorts. Been kind of weird with all the shows recently. Or at least Can't I even think this latest one is important to the overall canon of the show. So much so that I think it might be hinting at answers to the biggest mysteries left remaining in this franchise. Including the history of Rick Sanchez and his past relationship with Evil Morty. No joke, Rick and Morty may have just told us everything we need to know about Evil Morty in an 8 minute made for digital anime. Which, come to think of it, probably isn't the strangest thing that this franchise has ever done. So, I read that line as if I'm surprised, but should I? 
Should I be? You see, the first anime short titled Samurai and Shogun was released in the before times. Yeah, I I, bar I don't really like remember these two that much. I think I kind of skimmed over the second it's short. It's extremely cool and extremely But I do remember but Evil Morty. No whole lot of substance beyond our characters riffing on old samurai movies like Lone Wolf and Cub. No, it's the second one here that really matters. Released just a few weeks ago, Rick and Morty versus Genocide. I could tell it was a little bit more like that we're watching the adventures of C137 Rick. Unlike the previous anime short, which intentionally distanced itself from the action of the show by pulling a random Rick from a random universe completely disconnected from what we watch on TV, this one very specifically is drawing our attention to the fact that this is C-137 Rick. And it's more than just a fun action run. It's drawing the head, from though. the <laughs> themes, most importantly, the characters of the canon of Rick and Morty, the TV series. But first, a bit of an explainer of what this video is all about. And I know that explainer portions of videos can sometimes come across as something that YouTubers do to pad out the runtime, but believe me, this video needs the <laughs> explainer if the number of WTF I, I don't try to do that. This thing has gotten as anything to go Sorry with. Sorry if it the seemed like that at the beginning. The the this video seems to take place after the tales of I the usually Citadel tell you. episode from season 3 because it appears that everything is under the control of Evil Morty, who, if you recall, won the Citadel election at the end of that episode yes. before promptly I thoroughly enjoyed that. That now, season three, episode seven. And if there's any doubt that this is Evil Morty, well, the end of the episode gives us even more evidence, but we'll come to that in a second. Morty, worried that Rick is being hunted by a group called the Genociders, heads off to Tokyo to find him. As he walks around Tokyo, we see people starting to disappear. We're told that this is all part of the Genociders' plan. Destroy life by altering people's memories. We're shown a moment where Rick explains to Morty that reality as we know it is simply the Oh, same yeah, because in the first season, he was, like, going in his mind. Okay, it connects. If I can translate what I think this means, the past only exists because people remember and agree to certain events having happened. Without that consensus, the past is nothing. <laughs> It's a random guy is always there. Those past memories then are like points on a graph. You connect those together to find out where you are currently. That is yourself in the present. And if you follow that line forward, you're projecting out to create a target for your future. But without those past memories to guide mm -hmm. the way, to form a foundation upon which the present and future are built, everything collapses. Which, I presume, is why people are disappearing from the cities. Morty eventually makes his way to the last place in Tokyo that's still humming. The seedy place in the city Shinjuku Kabukicho for those who I don't, don't know, really Kabukicho remember is indeed that a real place thing, the entertainment but... and more importantly red light district of Shinjuku Tokyo a place filled with host and hostess clubs and the sort of hotels that charge you by the hour it also the has nip, a really awesome nip robot land. restaurant with a really catchy theme song that plays at all hours of the night where you descend down into a basement to watch animatronics create fire hazards literal feet from your face Bruh. I know all about that over on game theory you can watch Japan. it Pan is crazy. Anyway, it's not really explained how this is the one. It seems like everybody like wants to either learn Japanese or go to Japan. Always forming new memories, or maybe it's because they're boozing it up so hard that they never had any memories to begin with. But at any rate, this place definitely sounds like Rick's idea of a good time. So it comes as no surprise when Morty is able to find him there. Rick gives Morty a vial of some blue potion, saying, "Once I'm gone, take this. It'll make you Rip Van Winkle." Referencing the old American folktale, who drinks a mysterious potion. Falls into a deep slumber for 20 years and then wakes up to a completely different world. At least, that's what the English subtitles are saying. If you listen to the original spoken Japanese dialogue, Rick actually tells Morty that drinking the vial will turn him into Urashima Taro. Here, I'll play it for you. Did you hear it? Urashima Taro is a character from an old Japanese folktale about mm -hmm. a fisherman who leaves home on a fantastical adventure and returns to discover that a hundred years have passed in his absence. It's similar to Rip Van Winkle, but with a few important distinctions. Make a note of that, we'll come back to it in a minute. Anyway, Rick explains that the potion is made with the secretions okay. from the alien brain parasites that we saw 
on the season two episode Noted. Total Recall. In case you forgot this iconic episode, it's the episode where the Smith family has yeah, to deal I, with I alien parasites. Yeah, I don't. I did not forget this one. <laughs> false memories, which manifest themselves as new alien parasites. It's also the episode where everyone's favorite Mr. Poopy Butthole was first introduced. So again, the important detail Rare. here is that Rick gives Morty a blue potion that's somehow related to memory and memory I thought he gave him two. <laughs> At this point, Rick leaves Morty to go fight the genociders. I'm trying to make him sleep forever. Okay, what? An explosion rocks the building. Rick is sent flying, and a bunch of portals open, oh. revealing an army of Ricks. Of course, our Rick isn't bothered by this. From his yeah, perspective, I remember that. everything is unfolding exactly according to Kai Kaku. Rick unleashes his powers to become Ultra Instinct Rick, and an epic anime battle ensues. <laughs> the battle ends with an explosion that annihilates everyone, which reveals that the main genocider Rick was actually a robot all along. A robot controlled by none other than Evil Morty back at the Citadel. This whole moment is a yeah. the first time we were I remember all that Evil part. Morty that was crazy. One, in the episode Close Rick Counters of the Rick Kind, when Evil Rick is revealed to be, surprise, surprise, a robot. Notice the exact same mechanism behind their eyes. And we cut to the reveal of Evil Morty, who is controlling Very it via juicy. remote in his iPad. And in yet another parallel in both the anime and the episode, Evil Morty crushes the controller under his foot. In short, the whole genocider threat was created by Evil Morty to get he even still had eye problems. <laughs> hiding place. And while the assassination oh team might be dead, so is C-137. And apparently that's good enough news for Evil Morty. Mission complete. C-137 or is it as evil morty leaves the control room an image of rick appears behind him taunting him <laughs> he turns around and rick is no longer seen <laughs> was rick's taunt nearly a hallucination or something more again i'm getting to that let's just finish describing this thing we've got like less than a minute left in the aftermath That's the first the battle, amount of emotion i've seen from that guy wearing a that is the real evil morty guy jerry reaching out to his dear no, old guy. <laughs> too bad Yeah, this I actually did think of that on this part. The figure, who we can only presume to be Rick based on his profile, reaches for that familiar hip flask. That was like Morty or something. It's shown not to be the hip flask, but the vial of memory potion that Rick had given Morty earlier in the episode. Roll that JoJo meme. So as you can see, there's huh? a lot to unpack here. I'm gonna present two possible interpretations of this. One that seems to be among the more popular Dang, I did, floating around the yeah. and the other of which is my personal theory. One that I think meshes best with what we're shown both inside the anime short as well as the Rick and Morty series as a whole. The first interpretation is this. At the end, when Rick fights against the assassination squad and dies, getting good. <laughs> they always get good. This not only like, allows Morty to absorb Rick's memories, but physically transforms him into Rick. Good. General, From there, but... Morty, with his newly acquired Rick memories, rebuilds Japan. As we saw in the anime battle, the entire city got destroyed, so it's up to Morty, as the new Rick, to reset the world back to a time 14 years before, when Morty was born. He does this somehow, the video kind of hand waves this away, but you know, it's Rick. He has hundreds of backup plans for these sorts of situations. Anyway, with the city now reset to where it was 14 years ago by I mean, he's kind of he's kind of slacking in season four the sometimes. Begin repeating themselves. It's a time loop story except without any actual time travel. Because as we know, Rick and his creators always talk about how much they hate time travel. I mean, he even mentions it in this episode. <laughs> One strong piece of evidence supporting this theory is that Rick tells yeah, Morty maybe. that drinking the memory potion will turn him into Arashima Taro. In the old folk tale, Arashima Taro is a fisherman who rescues a turtle. And as a reward, the turtle takes him on a magical adventure down to the dragon palace beneath the sea. There, he meets with the princess Otoime and spends what he believes to be several days there. Eventually, he asks to go back home and is given a mysterious jeweled box. The princess tells him that the box will protect him, but that he shouldn't open it. Taro returns home and discovers that although only a few days have passed for him, more than a hundred years have passed back home. Everyone and everything that he remembered so from his home like village is gone. When he opens the forbidden jeweled box, one fifteen or something. <laughs> now, a lot of things fit here. Mostly the idea that when Morty drinks the potion, he literally becomes an old man. He becomes his grandfather.
grandfather, Rick. After all, Rick did tell him that the potion, when consumed, would turn Morty into Arashima Taro. Maybe he meant it a bit more literally than any of us could have imagined. A similar but slightly different interpretation is that Morty isn't Did I miss that? Like, why did he do potion, that, though? So much as he naturally grows up to become Rick. That this final scene isn't a time loop or anything like that, but rather a shot from many years later when Morty is himself an old man. In other words, what we know of as Rick is just an old grown-up Morty. Morty survives the battle against the genocide just so he goes can... on with his life. At some point, he drinks the potion and gains Rick's yeah. memories, uh -huh. but it does nothing to him physically. Morty just grows up and lives out his life. The idea that Morty grows up to become his own grandfather, or that Rick is just an older version of Morty, is certainly a strange one. And certainly a bit confusing, but it's one that's supported <laughs> yeah. by imagery in this episode. Right before Rick goes off to the fight, we see a momentary shot where the camera fades between a shot of Morty's face and Rick's overlapping. Now, that might seem like it's just a stylistic thing, but to me, it's clearly the animators telling us that these two separate people are actually one and the same. Now, this would have itself a few interesting consequences. One, <laughs> Morty to stay safe. Uh, that actually kind of looked cool. Of evil Morty Zoom with like the brown hair. out for C-137 right. or any of his descendants. Two, it aligns with the last words that Rick tells Morty before he goes off to the fight. And the confusing thing is, yeah, it's like, it can go like either way, like, it be mentally is kind of like that, or it's actually him. <laughs> In general, like if, if he actually did kind of turn into Rick, if he isn't. And three, it's something that's actually been alluded to in the show before. In that Tales of the Citadel episode again, we see the school where they train up Mortys. And who do we have in class with the Mortys? A dumb Rick. Did I graduate this time yet? Back then, it got people's minds working. If a dumb Rick is the equivalent of an up-and-coming Morty, could there be more to this connection here? This anime seems to suggest yes. Because here's the thing, theorists, regardless of the mechanism, whether it's transformation or They really like his <laughs> undeniable is internet that things like that. Rick. So the question is, is any of this canon? Well, I think so. The anime short goes a long way to reference specific moments and characters from throughout the TV series, explicitly naming this Rick as our Rick, C-137, all the visual parallels to evil Morty Super and his robotic Rick, outright calling out season two in the memory parasites. I mean, remember, if their goal was to just tell a what? fun Rick and Morty-themed story, it would have been very easy for them to do what the other anime short from earlier this year did, and just tell us that this Rick was from a different dimension, but they actively didn't do that. So that is already a huge possible revelation here, but I think there's one more thing. Remember that hallucination that evil Morty had of Rick? Yeah. It shows a familiarity, a past relationship. Evil Morty hallucinating C-137 Rick trolling him shows an inferiority complex, a psychological need to prove to this specific Rick that he's better, that he's smarter, he's more capable. And that doesn't make sense unless, as many have already suspected, this Morty is Rick's original Morty. One thing that's gone under discussed in video. Yeah, I think I saw another that video that said that he was like C137 a um TV series. In his first appearance, his plan is to frame Rick like, C-137 uh, for the murder of all the other old, Ricks. That way, the Council of Ricks punishes him by death. The plan doesn't work. And here again, we see evil Morty, despite having already taken over the Citadel, still targeting this specific Rick. Why? Is he afraid that Rick might take him out? It doesn't really make sense. Rick doesn't care about anything as long as he's left alone. No, this Morty has a personal vendetta against C-137 Rick. He wants That's to pretty obvious. <laughs> he has something to prove. He wants to see this Rick suffer. It's the Mortiest Morty versus the Rickest Rick. Evil Morty appears to be Rick's original Morty, which, as we just learned, is also kind of himself. Talking about Rick and Morty gets to be kind of weird sometimes. Of course, all yeah. <laughs> of these war bits and relationships between it's the characters are like, contingent on it actually being canon. And while I do think that all signs point to yes, I about all like crap. creators to one day say that this was made by an entirely different writing team and therefore nothing in the anime is canon. I don't want to see any more anime stuff happening to my son, Buster. Which means that until season five, <laughs> it's all just a, about that. a film theory. And cut. I forgot I was waiting for that ultimate outro. <laughs> okay, that was kind of weird. Yeah, that, that's a lot of like thinking. Um, I knew most of that. Like, this is a lot of 
I feel like he kind of like just kind of put all of them like all the theories like together almost in this video so I think I've heard all of those at least once but it's all it was all just like here um yeah that is I feel like they are kind of leading up to something but like you never know <laughs> um but yeah that was good like always it's keeping me thinking right now. I don't really know what to say about it. Um, it could definitely be true, though. A lot of evidence to back it up. And, you know, I, f I feel like they would just do that if they wanted to. Like, they just throw it all out there in that little video. And then maybe go more into detail, like, in Season 5 or whatever. But, yeah. That was a good little starting to this film theory crap. <laughs> Uh, see more on film. I also saw a food theory. <laughs> yeah, I readily saw that. That was so weird. I have some videos, and I will. I'm, I'm kind of trying to balance everything. Like, I don't want to just do like maybe daily videos and crap. I wanna. Oh, it'll be done. I won't take you know month breaks, but I. <laughs> I'll give it. I don't know. Yeah, this setup is freaking juicy, and I'm actually kind of like motivated to do stuff right now. Not just because of the setup, but um, um, stuff has been getting low. So yeah, I got some possibly juicy stuff on the way. I always say that, but I actually do this time, like I'm not lying. <laughs>